What is going on, Laker fans? I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in this Monday morning, Lakers Talk Daily. Uh, busy week for the Los Angeles Lakers. We got a number of games coming up. Wait, you got a game later today. You got a game tomorrow. You got a game Thursday. And you got a game Saturday. So four games this week for the Lakers. I uh, want to do two things on Lakers Talk Daily before I uh, do anything. Just want to continue to promote um, what we're doing here on ESPN LA. If you guys uh, don't mind don't mind subscribing to our YouTube channel. So all our shows, we're streaming them live. Obviously, everything that we're doing here, um, I'm doing Lakers Talk Daily. Uh, you got a couple of the fellas that are handling business for the Dodgers as well. Beto is doing the post-game show. We stream that as well. So please feel free to uh, stream all the shows with us. Um, okay, so two things I want to do uh, today. Number one, I want to talk about LeBron James, that game against the Warriors, specifically LeBron, what he was able to do. And then uh, some word yesterday came out about uh, the Lakers and kind of their situation and their position on um, uh, potentially still going after DeJounte Murray or maybe not going after him at all because of what D'Angelo Russell's been able to do. Okay, let's start off with this. Um, Lakers beat the Warriors on Saturday. Unbelievable game. I mean, let's. I know it's a regular season game. I know it's January, but 145, 144 in double OT. Um, Steph Curry with some back-breaking shots to keep the Warriors in the game. I thought his final three that he took um, in double OT, I was like, that one could be, that could be it. Uh, 45 point, 46 points for Steph Curry, hit nine threes, still had seven assists, was just incredible. On the other side of it, it was Braun. Braun, 36, 12, and 20. The guy breaks a, his career high in rebounding with 20 rebounds, also had the 12 assists that I was talking about. Um, just an incredible, incredible game. Um, and, and seeing those two still doing what they're doing, I had a moment, it's kind of funny to me at least, I had a moment on uh, on Saturday's game where I'm watching. The game was exclusive on ESPN ABC. And they got a shot of Braun over on the sidelines. And if you're looking at his beard, right, from the side, there's so much gray hair. And I'm saying to myself, I'm like, what the hell is going on? This guy's 39 years old in his 21st season. Put that to the side. I don't care if you're 29. I don't care if you're 19. You're having a night where you're putting up 36, 20, and 12. That's incredible. And Bron obviously doing that at his age. I thought it was such a unique game seeing Steph Curry and LeBron James still going toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other. You know, I go back to this, and I think everybody understands what I'm referring to when I'm talking about this. I go back to 2016. It was one of the greatest NBA Finals I'd ever watched. It was in Golden State. It was Game 7. And there's LeBron taking on, you know, list out all the different players that he's going up against. They win in Game 7. That was eight, almost eight years ago. Almost eight years ago. And here we are. It's still Steph Curry. It's still LeBron James. And they're still representing their teams the way they are. Uh, Lakers could have, there were times in that game, I thought, okay, this game's a wrap. There was times in that game where I thought, all right, Lakers are, they, they've got the game uh, in the bag. They, they look good. I mean, both sides of it, right? AD goes out for a little bit. Lakers go down by 50. I'm like, this game's over. Braun was just incredible. Just incredible. I encourage every Laker fan out there, just do me a favor. I know there's times we're going to complain about LeBron James. I know there's some Laker fans that will say, ah, you know, it doesn't play enough defense. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Ron's not going to be perfect every time, nor can he be at this age. But games like Saturday, kick back and enjoy them. You're watching one of the greatest to ever do it. Kick back and enjoy those games because who knows how many of those are left now. I feel like I've been saying that for a couple of years. 36, 20, and 12 off of a win for the Lakers. Played 48 minutes for the Lake Show. So, Keep that one in mind. Incredible game and incredible performance by LeBron James. Okay, other thing I mentioned that I want to get into here real quick. Let me read something off here. Um, Mark Stein, NBA insider Mark Stein, does a substack, does a fantastic job covering the NBA. I'm going to read something that came out of his substack here. He said, League sources say that there has been little to no trade dialogue in recent days between the Atlanta Hawks and the Los Angeles Lakers when it comes to former All-Star DeJounte Murray. Trade, talk, trade talks tend to be fluid this time of the year and can be easily sparked up again, but one source briefed on the talks termed the idea of Murray landing with the Lakers before the deadline as of Sunday as unrealistic. Okay, so the moving target here, February 8th, 
everybody wants to talk about. What are the Lakers going to do? The NBA trade deadline, all that stuff, right? We've been hearing about that now. I think since November, the some of the trade conver- chatter started with Zach Levine. All right, it's the Lakers. That, that happens. Here we are now, uh, about a week and a half away from the NBA trade deadline. NBA trade deadline is February 8th. I'm going to just tell you what I think this means for me of what Mark Stein is reporting. doesn't mean much. And I'll tell you why it doesn't mean much. This is what teams do, you know? Nah, we're good now. We don't have any interest. D'Lo's been balling out. Maybe there's some truth to it. I mean, D'Lo has been playing incredible, incredible over the last, in the month of January, he's been incredible. So maybe there's some truth to that. But I think it's also just it gives the Lakers a little bit of flex, a little bit of power, saying, you know, we don't have to have them. How bad do the Atlanta Hawks want to get out of the DeJounte Murray business? How bad do the Atlanta Hawks want to turn the page and create cap space? How bad do the Atlanta I, – I don't have that answer, but I'm sure the Lakers feel like they're in a little bit better of a position than they were a couple weeks ago. So uh, that could have something to do with it. Um, but when you still got 10 days or so before the trade deadline, I just don't take things like this too serious, uh, because I think anything could change at any time. And Mark Stein says it in his piece. He's basically saying, look, that's as of Sunday, yesterday, anything can happen moving forward. So I think that part is fair. So Laker fans, I feel like there's a lot more Laker fans now saying, Hey, let's, let's pump the brakes here. Maybe we don't get rid of, um, uh, D'Angelo Russell. And I understand some of the reasoning for that. For me, I'm a fan of DeJounte Murray. If I could get my hands on DeJounte Murray, knowing that he's going to also be a Laker for four years after this at age 27, I'll take my chances with that. But you guys can feel free to put your comments right here. Lakers got a game coming up this afternoon. So uh, we don't have uh, too much time before the next game for the Lakers. Um, Of course, we'll have all your coverage. Uh, Beto will have your post-game show tonight. I will uh, be back tomorrow morning doing some stuff as well. Thank you, Lake fans. Appreciate it. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Lakers taking on the Rockets a little bit later. Appreciate it, Lake fans.